Today we're going to work on a very simple but useful first Tinkercad project for your 3D printer. The problem statement for this project is very simple. We wanted our mail carrier to pick up our mail when we put something outgoing in the mailbox. Unfortunately, that wasn't happening. So when I called my local post office, they said we needed a flag on our mailbox for the mail carrier to pick up our mail. The solution was 3D printing. Today, I'll show you how to make a very simple magnetic flag for your mailbox. You can apply this to all sorts of things, but in our case, I made it for the mailbox. Okay, so my tool of choice for a lot of the stuff I do is Tinkercad. It's a free program, it's a web-based CAD program, it's from Autodesk, and the reason I like it is it's incredibly simple and fast to work with. Now I also use Fusion 360 for my more complex projects, but this is about as simple a project as you can get. We're going to be creating a flag that basically is a mail flag, and it's a very simple flag. So it really consists of a couple of basic objects, and we're going to start by bringing out a box. And as you can see, it's just a box, and I'm going to just pull on a corner to make it bigger for the purpose of giving us something to work with. And then I'm going to change its height. And as you can see, there are handles. There's corner handles. There's center handles. So the corner handles will go in and out like that. The center handles will go in and out like that. And you can see these are, this is the back part. So you can pull in and out there. And then this is height, like so. And we're gonna make this about, let's make it 20 high. And you can go in and type a number, and that's actually probably way too high. So let's, let's make it 15 high and 10 high, there we go. Let's make it 10 high. And the reason for the height is because I have a predefined shape. Which is not a favorite. There we go. I have a predefined shape which is called a workshop magnet. And this is designed to fit a bunch of magnets that I bought off of Amazon a while back. And I have a big collection of these, these magnets. I bought a pack of 50 or something like that. And the benefit of this is then I put this into the 3D model and I can insert a magnet. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. But the magnet is uh, five high, so we'll make the overall shape 10 high. All right, let's get rid of the magnet for the moment. We'll come back to it. So we're really going to make a couple of very simple things and I'm using my right mouse button to go up and down like this and right and left and so forth but I'm gonna just simply take this shape and I'm going to make it long and thin and that is the body of our flag in fact let me pull out the workshop magnet and make sure rotate it this way make sure there's enough space for it and there is so that's gonna be my body right there now I'm going to take a copy of this thing, this body, and you can do that with this button here, which duplicates it. And I'm gonna pull it out, butt it up against it. So now we have two wide, except in this case, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make this small, like so. And you can already see it's beginning to look a bit like a postal flag. But I'm gonna do one more thing, which is I'm gonna come back up here to our basic shapes, and I'm gonna create, take a trans, <laughs> I'm gonna take, I'm gonna grab a transparent box, like so. And what a transparent box does is if you put it in an object, anything that's transparent or is called a hole, and if you put it inside something else, let's, let's combine this, this box, for example, and if you combine these two things together by selecting both of them and you say group, the hole will cut out from the main object. Likewise, if you take an object and you connect them together and um, selecting both here together 
and you group them, they will turn into one unit. So that's now one unit until we ungroup it. So what we want is we want a box. And I want a box that is basically as wide as that as the original box. Now you can look underneath, see there's the, the underside. So I'm gonna sink this hole down a tiny bit, like so. And so now it's above and below. And I'm gonna rotate the whole thing. Let's find the top rotation. Every so often this I find it's a little bit difficult to do. Okay, and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, actually I should have rotated it 45 degrees. There we go, I'll rotate 45 degrees, that's what I want. And then I'm going to push this up into my flag. So it's effectively cutting a hole in my flag. And then I'm going to take these three parts. Well, let's take this piece and this piece and just group them together so you see what they do. There we go. We've got a little hole there. Now I'm gonna take this piece and this piece and group them together go and then I have these two magnets I don't have one of them but I want to put two magnets in here so I'm going to grab this grab this come up scaling locked okay so it wants me to not duplicate it that way it wants me to bring out another one so, so I'm gonna bring out two of these and I'll put one like about there and one about there and I will align them, align their centers there. And then I'm gonna take the two of them, this one and this one, and I'm gonna slide it here. And as you can see, now underneath you've got them here and here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here. Actually, I can do it from this side so it's a little easier. See, so I'm gonna take this and this, group them together. Now you can oops, come back out, but you can see that there's a hole there where the where the hole used to be, and that is the entire 3D design for this project. We're going to take this. I'm going to export it as an STL, and then we'll bring it into the 3D printer. After I exported the STL, I sliced it in Cura and sent it to the Ultimaker to print. And you'll notice that I oriented the print upside down so the holes for the magnet are on the top. And that allows me to drop the magnets in, but it also means that I don't have to try to get molten filament to span the space of those holes. I also added in some lettering that says pick up mail, which I didn't show you in the tutorial, but it's really just typing out the words, creating them as a whole, and then grouping them together as we did before. And uh, within a few short minutes, this was actually a relatively quick print, we had a mail flag. So there you go, a very simple mail flag for our mailbox. As you can see, it's just a simple set of Tinkercad primitives connected together and printed out. The end result, our mail is being picked up. Have yourself a great day, build yourself something awesome, and explore Tinkercad. It's simplistic, but it's surprisingly powerful at the same time. My name is David Gewertz for ZDNet's DIY IT, and go out there and build something awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you.